What's up, everybody? It's Aaron Duncan here, back again with another Panthers video brought to you by Unnecessary Bluntness Sports Talk. And today we are talking about this matchup coming up in week eight between the Atlanta Falcons and the Carolina Panthers. The Carolina Panthers are traveling down to they're traveling down to Atlanta. The I-85 South rivalry is 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 it's been a little lopsided. I'm not gonna lie. In the Falcons' favor, the Panthers did win down in Atlanta last year, but that was their first win in about seven seasons. It's crazy, but we'll see what's going to happen. So in today's video, we're going to talk about some of the matchups to watch that's going to dictate this game because the Panthers, they've been reeling. Four losses in a row, they need to turn it around and bounce back after an embarrassing loss to the New York Giants, and the Falcons are fresh off a bye after leaving London, and they've kind of been finding their groove offensively. They got in a row, they're back up to 500. So in this video, we're going to talk about everything that's going to make this matchup tick. But before we do... Like I said, my name is Aaron Duncan, and on this channel, Unnecessary Bluntness, I give recap and analysis of the Carolina Panthers and the whole NFL through live streams, podcasts, uh, videos like this, and just everything that happens with the Panthers, I'm on top of it. So if you want, don't want to miss out on anything, make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell icon because the bell icon is going to make sure you get a notification every time I drop a video because when I drop videos, it, like I said, a lot of stuff is happening with this Panthers team from updates to trades to whatever. So if you want to stay in the loop, make sure you are subscribed and hit the bell icon. Also, give the video a thumbs up, please. Please, 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 because it doesn't cost you a thing and it really helps me out in the algorithm. Nevertheless, let me know down below in the comments. I want to know what you think. What is the matchup you're going to be paying attention to in this game that you think could make or break the outcome compared to what I got? And let me know how you feel about it after the video, too. So comment down below. The first matchup in the big time matchup, obviously, is the rookie Kyle Pitts versus second year standout Jeremy Chin. Now, Kyle Pitts has been on a tear lately. It seemed like they weren't even really trying to get him the ball, even though he was their uh, number what, four overall pick. But nevertheless, Kyle Pitts has come on very, very strong in his last game in London against the Dolphins. He really, really balled out. This man had over 100 yards, and he showed skills. This guy, Kyle Pitts, has been putting on everything. He's running the route tree from the outside, the inside, the slot. He lines up pretty much everywhere. How were the Panthers trying to match up? They drafted J.C. Horn, who's a good matchup for him in college from South Carolina and Florida going at it, but J.C. Horn's hurt right now. So Jeremy Chen will have to be up to the task. He's usually the one guarding tight ends. But Kyle Pitts is no ordinary tight end. They call him the unicorn for a reason because this guy is just very unique. So I think it will be a joint effort, but I think Jeremy Chin will be the primary matchup. Don't be surprised to see cornerbacks like Stephon Gilmore or Keith Taylor on him um, just to try to get physical with him and see what happens. But I think Jeremy Chin is going to have to be that, that guy. The next matchup, we're going to keep it on the outside between Calvin Ridley and Dante Jackson. Now, this is the matchup I'm going to be paying attention to the most because the Kyle Pitts, uh, he's getting a lot of the uh, drama. He's been overshadowing Calvin Ridley thus far this year. But when it comes to facing the Carolina Panthers, not too many receivers are better than Calvin Ridley. Calvin Ridley, for his career in the sixth game he's played, averaging over five receptions, 90 yards, and over almost a touchdown, point six six touchdowns per game. That's crazy. And it seems like every time we play them, he ends up coming with the, the big play. And I'm just going to hope some guy's going to slow him down. Even Dante Jackson has come out and admittedly said that Calvin Ridley is one of the toughest covers just because of his pure route running ability. So can we get it right? There's a lot more cornerback depth. So there could be a couple different looks between Bouye, Keith Taylor, and Dante. But Dante, I think, is going to be the guy that's going to have to match up from a speed perspective. And he's going to have his hands full. But... This is going to be something to pay attention to, and I'm a little bit nervous about this, to be honest, because Calvin Ridley is a problem just because he's so shifty. He's so good in and out of cuts. He's getting a ton of targets per game from uh, Matt Ryan. So pay attention to this matchup. So let's flip it over to the other side of the ball because the other matches I'm worried about is DJ Moore, wide receiver for the Carolina Panthers, versus the corners of the Atlanta Falcons, A.J. Terrell and Isaiah Oliver. Now, A.J. Terrell, he's been apparently a second-year guy. He's been having a pretty good year, according to pro football focus he's tied for first for in man coverage for giving up the lower lowest passer rating that's saying that's saying something but dj moore has been one of the hottest receivers in the league granted sam Darnold has struggled without christian mccaffrey but the guy that's been picking up a lot of that slack is dj moore defenses are king on that and now they're bracketing him but dj moore had a big game against uh these guys last year in the dome as he burnt isaiah oliver for a long one and even at home against the carolina uh excuse me, against the falcons in charlotte he had a big play in the final drive against the falcons even though it didn't turn out in their favor so i'm gonna see how these young guys match up against dj moore because like i said he's a speedster but he's good after the catch he can go long he can go short it's just a matter of if sam Darnold can connect with him but i think 
He can have a big day. He can turn small, short passes that are easy for Sam Darnold in the long games like we've seen him done before. So pay attention to how DJ Moore does work today because obviously Christian McCaffrey will be out again. So DJ Moore will be looking to pick up the majority of that slack. And like I said, with the talent that these uh, Falcons corners have been playing with, it's been a little bit better this year, obviously. But I still think they can be had by DJ Moore. So I will be paying attention to that matchup. The next matchup is on the D-line. We're going to go to the trenches. And it's going to be Grady Jarrett, defensive tackle for the Atlanta Falcons, versus Michael Jordan, the guard out of North Carolina. No, I'm just playing. Not, 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 not that Michael Jordan. The Michael Jordan, he is the guard for the Carolina Panthers, not the guard that went to North Carolina and played for the Chicago Bulls. Michael Jordan is one of the newest members of this team, but Matt Rule has been raving about him. He's a pretty physical guy. He's still trying to get his legs up underneath them in, within this system. But we've had some injuries on the interior at the guard, so he will have to step up and play that position. Dennis Daly or Trent Scott will be playing the other guard. So, it, uh, obviously, Grady Jerry can line up on multiple different sides. He's very quick off the ball. He's good at getting penetration into the backfield and disrupting a lot of the run plays that Carolina Panthers were trying to do when it comes to the zone blocking scheme. So pay attention to what happens inside between Grady Jerry, Michael Jordan, and possibly Dennis Daly. Last but certainly not least, we're going to talk about Cordell Patterson. And Shaq Thompson. Now, Shaq Thompson will be fresh off an of injury. He is a game time decision, but I'm assuming that he is going to play. Shaq Thompson has been the heart and soul of this defense. He's the most experienced guy in this defense when it comes to being a Carolina Panther. But he's been hurt. He hurt his foot against the, the Dallas Cowboys, and he blamed it on their turf. Nevertheless, he is back hopefully this week, and we will need him because Cordell Patterson has finally found his niche. Instead of just being a gadget guy, from every team that he's played for, he's now found a good staple in this Atlanta Falcons offense. He splits carries with Mike Davis out of the backfield, but he can do a lot of things. He can cause a lot of problems, not like Christian McCaffrey. Obviously, McCaffrey is the best running back in the league when it comes to getting out of the backfield. But Cordell Patterson has wide receiver skills, but he can do it out of the backfield. They find a lot of creative ways to get it to him in the pass, the run, obviously in the special teams in the return game. So that will be even be a key matchup to pay attention to if the Panthers will be able to kick touchbacks or not. But... Matching up on offense and defense, Shaq Thompson will have to band this guy up because Shaq Thompson probably won't have the responsibility of covering Kyle Pitts or anything. So who will have the back out of the backfield, which will be Cordero Patterson. Cordero Patterson, like I said, he can do it in a lot of different ways, people. He has a lot of speed. He's very explosive. He can hit the home run at times. Don't let the, the wide receiver number fool you. This guy is a tough guy. He's not lighting the pants either, but Shaq Thompson has the speed, obviously, and he'll be chomping at the bit to get back out there. And depending on how he'll be able to move from a lateral perspective on that foot will be the telltale of how this matchup goes. I'm really excited to see how this one plays out on the inside, and I really can't wait for this game in general because, like I said, Matt Ryan has been playing pretty well. He's been getting the ball out pretty quick, and the way this Panthers defense is, they like to blitz. They like to be aggressive. They have a good front four and get after him. Hopefully, they can make him hold the ball a little bit longer when it comes to the quick passing game and get after him. So another matchup, obviously, is Matt Ryan versus that D-line. They won't be con uh, directly contending with each other, but that's definitely something else to watch because, like I said, Matt Ryan has always been able to get that ball out quick against the Panthers, making it hard for them to get pressure. So don't need to be able to push and collapse that pocket around Matt Ryan. Don't let him get comfortable and get him on the ground and keep that offense out of rhythm. But like I said, you guys let me know down below in the comments what matchups you'll be looking forward to the most in this game and what do you think will be the make or break? What do you think about the matchups I picked? Do you think I did a good job picking them out? Did I miss anything? I know that I didn't cover everybody, but there's some other matchups I know I probably missed. So let me know down below in the comments. But without further ado, I'm Aaron Duncan signing off with the Necessary Blunt, the sports talk. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Hit the bell icon. I'll see you next time. Peace.